Hi guys, welcome to uh, Forge Cottage Art Club Studio. I'm Mark, uh, you've seen me before. Um, I'm going to do another uh, tutorial today. Um, we're going to paint some um, tulips in a blue vase. Um, and I'm not, it's not going to be too hard to do if you follow. Oh, I think the phone's slipping. No, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not going to be too hard. It's going to have a very dark background um, and some nice uh, light on the vase and uh, just a few tulips coming out of the vase um, showing the highlights that you can do with them and everything. Um, so the best thing to do is to watch this through. It'll probably take me about, about 35, 40 minutes in all, I reckon. But it's probably best to watch it through first and then if you're going to do it, follow it afterwards and then you can pause it and, and take your time and do each step um, bit by bit. I've been getting a lot of feedback on these. Um, there's been a lot of people contacting me via email, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, subscribers when I've been putting the videos on there and I've been getting a lot of feedback saying please do more. So I will keep doing them. Um, there's obviously some people out there that are enjoying following them and some people have contacted me just saying they, they just enjoy watching them. Uh, they, they don't feel that they have to do the art. Um, they just like to just watch somebody doing it and uh, seeing a picture evolve and how it comes together. So it's probably quite therapeutic to watch that. So I'm happy to, to cater for all those people that want to just watch them through or whether you just you want, you actually want to have a go at painting it as well. And, and remember, I've been doing this a long time and, and the, most, the most important thing is to be enjoying uh, your art enjoy your art as much as you can because it's uh, never get stressed by it you know if it starts going wrong don't panic just enjoy it and it becomes like a therapy I'm very lucky to be in a situation where I can work uh, doing my favorite thing and um, you know at the moment obviously the art clubs closed but hopefully people will come back and um, and rejoin and and carry on doing art with me anyway so let's get this going I'm going to draw a vase first of all uh, and then I'm going to paint all the background in uh, and then we're going to paint the tulips over the top. So we're going to use, let's just use a, a blue um, chalk. I just happen to have one there, but it's fine. Whatever, this will show up probably uh, reasonably well. The vase I'm going to use is going to be one of these sort. Um, do the oval first at the top like that, a shallow oval. Put a bit of a lip on it like that if you can, just to show the thickness of the... Uh, of the vase there. And then we're gonna have one of those ones that has a bit of a straight neck. I always go for each side like that so you can get it reasonably uh, well proportioned. If you do one side first and carry on elsewhere, you might not uh, get it so, so good. So it's worth doing each bit this side first. So I'm gonna to have to come across a bit because of the way I'm gonna just bring it out like that. And then it's gonna come down like that. Okay, so the key thing is trying to get that the same. It probably won't. It's quite fiddly, um, but let's have a go. And you can shape it and draw it. I'm going to be painting this anyway, so it doesn't matter if you don't draw it correctly the first time. See, that doesn't come out enough. So I'm going to bring that out further. I always find it hard doing the other side. Same. There we go. That's probably better. The time that's painted, it won't matter. Uh, I'm going to paint it blue anyway, actually. Put a bit of a curved bottom on that. Show a bit of a table there. Get it roughly about the same height. And there's going to be tulips and lovely uh, uh, leaves coming out, those long, uh, luscious leaves they have, those lovely limey green leaves. And we'll paint the background first. Now, sometimes um, I would paint, uh, draw the heads on and do the little bit. On this one, because the tulip shape is quite an easy shape to, to um, sorry, there's nobody manning the camera today, so you can't look down at the palette. You can only look at what I'm doing. So I'm just making sure I'm in line with the camera. Um, you can't, it's very easy to paint round tulip shapes and tulip leaves because they're only pointed things or they're only kind of like a, a, a wine glass shape, aren't they? So very easy shapes to paint round. So, Today, we'll, we'll, well, actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. We could actually draw them in. But do you know what I'm not going to? I'm going to paint the background in. 
I'm gonna go with a color, I'm gonna dry it, and then I'm gonna go with a color that's probably lighter than what I need so I can get the, the, the flowers and the, and the leaves over the top, so there'll be a couple of layers. Um, I'm gonna need a little bit of acrylic in my background color today. That's so that the background color dries waterproof. Because if I'm gonna be doing flowers over the top of a dark background, red flowers and orangey tulips and stuff like that, um, and, the, and we're only gonna use gouache, paints, then you're gonna find that some of that color underneath is gonna pick up and go into, the, um, into your red, making a kind of brown color. So we'll need to use a waterproof background. Now that we can use gouache and acrylic mixed, it will still create a, a waterproof background. I wanna kind of go really dark here, and as we come down, get a bit lighter around here. So let's see how that comes out. So first of all, I've got some black acrylic. I just use these uh, ones online, they're just called classmates actually. I use them for the um, art club. They're a, um, an acrylic paint in a tube, you get quite a lot. Um, pretty good price, I think they're under a five or a bottle though, so they might, they might be just crept over. Um, some acrylics are a lot more pricier than others and it's all to do with how much pigment content is, is actually suspended in the, in the paint, in the actual liquid of the paint. So that's why um, some things are more expensive than others. And these are gouache paints. Um, let me find a black. These are gouache paints. These are not waterproof, so if you was to wet them after they've dried, they will, they will come back to life, if you like. Um, and this is a cheap sort of gouache paint, really. It's one of the less expensive ones. Again, you can buy gouache paints in tubes, which are very expensive, and just as strong as acrylic paint and, and oils. So they, they can be quite powerful. But it's all down to the quantity of pigment, because that's what costs the manufacturers uh, the money, uh, uh, you know, how much pigment, how much of the quality stuff goes in it. Um, but when you're catering for an art club with many groups of children, I go for the less expensive paints, which do a very good job anyway. So you, you cater, and uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I do lots of paintings um, on acrylic on canvas, and I just use these paints. I use these. I might use sometimes uh, the, the reeves in tubes occasionally, but they're about the same quality. Um, so, and they do a very good job for me. Um, so I, I, I don't really use very expensive stuff, to be honest with you, even for my um, professional, more commercial type paintings that I do. Right, so let's go with the background. I want it to be um, sort of a blacky off black. I'm gonna stick some brown gouache into the black as well. And I'm also gonna put some purple in, and this is gouache too. So a bit of purple gouache going in. And I'm using a little drop of water with it. Uh, acrylic black first, and then gouache black, then I'm putting some purple in, and then I'm putting some brown in. And plenty of uh, made up so that it doesn't run out before I've used it all up. Right, so there we go. Uh, so very little water in this. Let's see what it's like, nice and dark, going over the edge. Like that. And I'm getting a nice sort of um, gloom, if you like. There's a gloominess to it, like there's a, there's a light source somewhere in the painting, like that. It's not jet black. I wouldn't want jet black. It really wouldn't help it. Now, as I'm coming down, I'm just adding a drop of water to my brush and a bit more purple and a bit more brown to that black acrylic. And I'm just gonna start there, not, not there, because I'll just block it out. I'm not gonna start there, because it'll be a line. So I'm gonna go over what I've just done. There might not be much of a difference, but you might see a slight, I can see a difference close up. And it's definitely getting lighter. Not much, you don't want it to suddenly become light. Like that, just brush that in. Smooth it out. I'm just feathering it out now with the tips of the brush. Now I'm going to add a bit more brown and purple. Now if my paper starts to ripple, it will do a little bit, but don't worry. As I say, always it will come back and, sh and go back to its original shape. Down through here, now you can see it's a wee bit lighter. Go over what you've done a little bit too. Now I'm going to start to go around that vase. I'm brushing each way because I'm trying to avoid stripes and patterns. Just trying to just get it nice. Like that. Just using the tip of the brush. Uh, a bit more brown and purple. Down in this bit. And I think you can possibly see that now on screen that that is quite a bit lighter. 
it's going to come around there. I'm not being that worried about going over the bars a little bit because when I paint it back in, I should be using paint and it will obviously, I can cut back in over that, but if I can get it reasonably okay. I'm not going to go on the table area. Like this. Blend it, blend it, blend it. Try and avoid any end lines where your brush suddenly stops. I've got a load there, but I'll get rid of it in a second. So just smooth that out, bank down to that line. And then I'll just work away from the vase like that. And then maybe up. And that kind of helps it look like you didn't actually paint around the vase. going to go dark-ish down there with what, what was uh, put similar colour to that there, so not quite as much purple and brown in it. And then just bring that round there, cut it inside there. I could get a small brush, but I'm not going to bother. And then in there. And back out. Now I've got to do the same as thing as what I did there really. And my paper it's got a bit baggy, that's normal. And now I'm just going to gently brush through, removing any lines. It helps to remove lines. Like that. Sounds like I'm working on canvas. If I'm not, it's just a bit of paper. 140 gram paper I use. Um, it's just an ordinary sugar paper, um, but it's great. I like it because you can work with pastels over the top as well and it works really well. Now I'm going to give it a bit of a, a blow dry now because um, I want to work, work on it in a second. I, I want it to just uh, flatten out a bit before I work on the bars. These ones, these long ones. So I might start using these ones today. So on that dark plate that I use, there's my dark plate. So I'm going to put that to the side for a minute. I might come back to that in a little while or nick colours from it. But next I'm going to do a blue vase. So I'm using a little bit of blue uh, acrylic, just a little bit, not too much because it's, um, it's only a small vase. Like that, oh, that's gone out too much, never mind. I will be using some of that blue in my greens later anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. And I'm going to nick some of that black acrylic and some of the purple off the other plate and put it just there. So it's black and purple mix there look, and I'll use that in a minute. Now um, this brush I'm going to mix um, some colours up for this uh, vase. Actually that might be a bit big that brush to be honest. Sorry, I'm going to use a smaller one. Uh, I'm going to use this one for now. Um, so I'm using blue first of all with a bit of black in it and I'm going to put that and here, I'm going to get that a better line now. So if I bring that around, like that, brush that on. Let's take that out a bit further. Like that. And so that's just blue, a tiny little bit of black in it. Blue will do, it doesn't have to be exactly the same blue as I use. Try and get that good. Put a drop of water with it so it flows off the brush a bit easier. That's a bit sticky. Uh, it's quite warm today and it gets a bit sticky and it doesn't want to flow off the brush. So just wet the brush a little bit and let's get that nice. I'm just, I haven't decided on the table yet and that's why I haven't done it normally. I'd probably do this first, maybe. I usually do backgrounds first, but you know what? I haven't really decided on what colour I want to do it yet. I might do, might make it look like wood or something. I'll see. But I thought I'd crack on with the vase anyway. Um, so let's paint this bit in here as well. Right. Now it's lighter there because I haven't loaded up my brush with paint. I've just used what was left in it. And what that means is it's letting more of the paper colour through. Look, 
see there, through there. Which is a good way of also lightening up work, isn't it? Because you can rely on the paper to do it. But now I'm gonna add white to the bluey black color. And I'm gonna bring it through here. Like this, all the way around that curve. Nice and easy. Bit of water with it, because it's not flowing. Just take that round, pull it down to there, and then we can just drag that round. Like this. Gone over the lines there, but of course that doesn't matter. Because I've got to do the background, yeah, haven't I? So I can cut back through then. I want this to look a bit more, you know, like a sort of a, a satin glazed pot, if you like. So it's a, it's a clay pot, which has been glazed with blue, but it's not ultra shiny. It's got that kind of satiny, um, brushed sort of gloss um, shine about it. It's not, it's not overly shiny. And I'm just scrubbing that in. Now, if I was to carry on scrubbing in there, all I would do is lighten up that area. So the best thing to do is wash the brush out so there's nothing in it. Dry off the brush, like that, so it's just slightly damp. And now carry on blending. Like that, through there. Now, obviously, it might need darkening a touch, so you can easily put some more paint back through there and darken it. You never know, you know, you, you know what's gonna happen roughly when you get some experience, but some things you need to cater for, and. I'm just darkening that down there a bit. Drag it round. And then just let it blend through there. A little bit dark at the bottom through there as well. Like that. And of course you can use your finger a little bit. Now, what I want to do also is to start lightening this area more here. So it's pure blue and white. And I'm just going to lighten this area here. See that? I started with a circle. And I'm going around and around and around. And then I just blend it down. See that bit there again? I'm going to go with a bit of a paler blue now, even paler, while it's still slightly wet. So this is a very, very light blue now. A bit there. And I'm going to go round and round again. And slightly down. Gives you a little bit of light on that pot. Now you can go even shiny with that. I might do, in fact, in a minute. I'm just going to see how that dries. I'm just using a dampish brush now to just soften that edge through there. Slightly damp, not much water in it at all. I'm just tickling it, basically. Just give it a little tickle there, like that. And what I'd like to darken now is here. I don't think that's dark enough, so I'm going to use the blue and the black. And we're just going to bring that through there like that. Not all the way up. I'm going to just do it lower down and under. I 
I'll soften that edge through there. So again, I'm gonna just um, take some of the paint off with water, rub it out with glue paper. Not much water in there at all. Let's just take the last bit out of my fingers and I'm just gonna blend that through. Okay, so let's just stand back for a minute and have a little look. It's coming. So I'm going to make it a little bit shinier here. Just a little bit shinier there. And the great thing about teaching art is you can say some of it verbally can't be showing and it's great showing people because they can suddenly see what you mean um, when you're trying to do something verbally and you know, trying to explain something verbally they can, you know kind of well but when you show them it's there and it straight away you can see exactly what I'm trying to explain and also what I'm doing and you can apply it to your own work and trying to work out what I mean, you know. So there's, there's our vase. I haven't done the top properly um, and I, I don't really need to in many ways because if you think about it, there's going to be um, foliage coming out of there. Now, kind of map out the foliage. We need to put in some vases, uh, sorry, not vases, some leaves. So this is fairly dry now. You can hear that's dry. That's obviously still wet. I'll give it a quick blast. Let's give it a quick blast with the old hair dry. I can. I can lean on that without the fear of um, it sticking to my hands and causing problems. So what I want to do, I've got pictures of vases, uh, sorry, um, tulips and things on my iPad here. Um, so I'm sort of using a few different pictures, really. I'm going to start putting in some flowers. Let's have a flower coming out as its stalk. So another flower there. And we're just going to keep them quite simple, this sort of shape. Like that. There's one flower. Bring another one up here. Curve it off because of the weight of the flower. And just do them kind of that kind of shape for now. Like that, and then another one coming up through here. Like that, so three um, tulips. What else could we do? They're quite thick tulip stems, aren't they? And uh, because of that, it means that they can stand on under their own weight because the heads are quite waxy and and, uh, and heavy. Let's put a few leaves in. Let's have a leaf coming over here. Like that. And another one up there. We're only doing this simply. We're not going to try and recreate some sort of horticultural um, precision painting. We're just doing some bits and pieces so that it looks tulipy and, and nice. So it'll be an impressionistic view. Right, let's have another leaf coming up here. Do a flower right there in front of it, um, and then obviously you know you can make up where you want to put yours. You don't have to do them exactly how I've done mine. You can you can kind of make them up, can't you? I think we've got a flower there, flower there, flower there, flower there, flower there. I think I'll stick a flower there, sort of hanging like that, and another one through here. Like that. We've got flower in front of that leaf as well. That'll be fine. And let's have a leaf that's curled and gone through there a little bit like that. Okay, so now this will be nice, won't it? Painting all these in. Um, so what we need now is some yellow um, acrylic. I've just used uh, this one as, as I say, the classmates one. You can put some yellow gouache in it. If you're using all 
um, go ash. You can do this all go ash. I know I said about the waterproof part of it, but as long as you don't brush too hard or just be prepared to pick up some paint underneath, it will drag up a little bit and, and darken your greens and your tulip colors. But there's nothing to stop you drying that and then going in again and that then you'll be all right. It's just to avoid all that. So I haven't got to worry about doing too many um, layers. Now this, this is uh, gonna go on the side of the blue plate. And I'm gonna put in some stems and some leaves first. So let's just see um, how this looks. So we're gonna just mix it into the blue. Look, we've got that kind of nice rich green there. I don't want it all to be the same green, so I'll keep changing this. And I might use some go ash green and things like that. So let's see how well this goes on over a dark background. If, of course, it, it doesn't like the dark background, then, then we'll just give it a little bit more. Okay, so let's see, that's not too bad. It'll probably darken as it dries. So let's get that on. So there's a leaf, and we'll highlight this leaf and do bits and pieces with it. Another leaf up there. And of course, we do have the blue chalk to cover, if you can, what, what we drew with. And of course, if you feel that you can't cover all of it or there's a bit sticking out at the end, we can always rub those bits out. There's another leaf through there. You can always put a little bit of curled tip on it. We'll be using pastels later as well, so that was a dry bit, that wasn't wet. Um, we'll be using pastels and stuff as well on this. And we'll do a mixed media thing, you know, so there's lots going on in it. And it all works down to there. Now I'll darken that down there later. Um, let's put that leaf in. It's quite a good fun doing this because you haven't got to be too precise. I'm kind of making it up anyway. I mean, I've looked at a couple of tulips down there, but I'm not. Because it's not a horticultural painting or anything like that, horticultural painting, I'm just letting it just flow and just thinking tulips. And I know that they have pointed narrow leaves. And I know they have thick stems and lovely big sort of wine glass shaped flower heads. So I'm just keeping that in my mind and not worrying too much about looking at them. Right, because I want it to be a certain style as painting. If I, if I get too precise with it about how those things look, um, I'm going to sort of lose the, the look I'm after. There we go, so a bit more green there for that leaf coming down through there. I've got that little one there, like John Boy said. Just sticking down through there like that. And that's just that one green I've been using. Now you can see as it's drying, it's dulling down because the background colour was so dark, it's made that green darken. That's all right, doesn't matter because I can put in some highlights and other bits and pieces anyway. Down here, I'm going to darken that all down a bit down there. So I'm, I'm, I'm using the same green with a bit more of that bluey blacky colour in it. And I'm just going to maybe make that a bit darker first. Hold on, there we go. And I'm just going to darken these bits down where it's first coming out. And the undersides of some of those leaves. Like that. We'll put a shadow on that um, vase later for that leaf coming out of there. Like that. So I'm just darkening all that down in there where it's coming out of the vase. So that it looks a bit busier and a bit clumped and a bit more shadowy. Probably have to come back to that again in a minute because it's still allowing that light bit through. But it's all good fun. And now I'm going to go with some darker greens, just a little bit here and there. And I will be putting highlights on as well in a minute. So these are darker greens. Now, when I say darker greens, I've just done, I've added a bit of black to that green and a touch more blue. And that gives us a darker green. And we can put it there. put it roughly where I'm putting it on my leaves and interpret it to your picture. I'll wash out my brush now and squeeze out all the water. And now I'm going to go with a nice lightish green here and there. And I'm going to just put a little bit of that 
uh, white acrylic into that green that I was using, and a bit more yellow, like that, and some of that darker green. So I'm getting a, a nice flow of the colours making one colour. This is a lighter green. Let's see how this goes on. So I'm going to just bump some up there. and let it flow out when we get down towards the shadow area, shadowy area. Another bit of light on that leaf. Like that. More light on that one there. Just curving around. And you can just rub that through. A bit more on there. Like that. Probably have to do it again. I think you'll have to do it a few times. In fact, if you was, if you are going to do it with gouache, it might be worth not not painting in the background first and painting around everything. Um, see how you go. But they're not they're not particularly hard shapes to paint around, are they? So you could um, you could do it the other way around. Otherwise, you might have to just use more layers. But if you've got acrylic, then you you, you can do it either way. Really, just gives you that little bit more scope. As I said, we'll be using pastels as well. And that's catching the light as well, that one there. Okay, there. Now, what about um, some more light? So let's go more white, yellow into that green. And a little bit more yellow. Flatten them out, flatten the brush out a little bit. If you flatten the brush out, it forms a bit of a blade. I'm using a flat brush, and then you can get that extra bit of light through there where it's just touching, and use your fingers just to soften it a little bit. There, I'm going to have this. Remember, these are sort of glossy leaves, aren't they? Tulip leaves are quite glossy and shiny, so you just put a bit through the middle there, and then go that way with it, and go that way with it. It looks like you're getting shine on that curve. Like that, just through that curve. A little bit on the tip of that one. And a little bit of light showing itself through there and on that one. Not much down there, just rub that through. Okay, a little bit of light. Up there, down there. So of course I'm just making it all up. I'm just not I'm not looking at a vase of tulips. I'm just making this up. brush out and we're going to put some stems in now but we're going to use a spinner brush we're going to use um, a round brush about that round that kind of size not too small not too thick and we're going to use a medium green so yellow acrylic a little bit of blue going in and a tiny bit of that darker green color I'm using but I don't I want them to be seen so and we're going to go directly over those um, blue colors what are tulips like on the end yeah they just have a little where it joins the actual petals it just has a little little green bit there but not much and then you can just bring these stems through like this sometimes the stems are in front of the leaves you can make it look like it's going in front and sometimes it's behind the leaf uh, that one there is in front it's coming down through there another one up there and simple and then you can do a darker side to them so more black and blue going into that green so you get a darker green and then you can just put a little bit of dark with it it's not dark enough I need more black you get this really dark green and to lighten it if you've gone too far with it just put a little bit more yellow with it and maybe a touch of um, white and then you'll lighten it up enough so it still looks like a dark green without being too black and then you can just put in some darks on the leaf and 
see. On the stems I was working on, but I've come away. Sometimes I do that one. I look at the, I'll be doing one bit and I see, oh, I see that over there, you see. So you sort of move around. Now, a nice thing to do sometimes is to put other colours in your leaves. Now, sometimes I see um, in tulip leaves a slight purplish tinge. I'm going to just do that. And it will work well when you put in the... Um, it's got a slight purplish, tingy, greeny, grey colour, which I'm just popping in there. I'm just working it in with it. All right, so it's just purple gone into that greeny colour. And I'm just literally just brushing some in wherever I like. Like that, a little bit under there. It's quite a stylized picture, it's not trying to be realistic, it's sort of giving you a nice sort of happy sort of Almost like how Van Gogh used to paint, I guess. Get that kind of um, quick, you know, big brush strokes, light and shade, and nice stuff going on in it without being too realistic. I mean, if, you, if anybody saw me doing the, the sunflowers the other day, you know, you, you, you're not worrying too much about it looking too realistic, and that's what keeps it looking nice, actually. For that kind of style. Right, I think I've done enough there. Um, I'm going to do some um, flowers now. So I'm going to use, um, I want to do sort of a, I think I'll use do reds, but not too red. I've got this um, strong acrylic red. I'm going, to, I'm going to use that as my base and um, bear with me a minute. I'm just going to go into my kitchen area and grab another plate. So I've got another plate, nice clean one. I still need these colours. I'll just put them away for a minute. So a little blob of that red going in. That's that one. It's a very powerful red, that. I've had that quite a while, that bottle. You only need little bits to add into other colours. Now that's quite a nice rich red. I could use that. Um, I'm going to put in some gouache red, which is a much lighter red. I'm going to stick that with it. And I'm also going to Put some orange in now you're probably thinking you use all acrylic red well when acrylics on its own and it dries it dries quite shiny and um, if it was all acrylic I, I know I want to put some pastels on at the end so if I just used acrylic it would be so shiny the pastels wouldn't really grip they would just sort of smooth about and they wouldn't really uh, look very good it wouldn't work too well so I try and keep the paint fairly gritty and grippy so that I can put the pastels on later so here's my colour. So I've got acrylic red and two gouache colours, um, a, a lighter red and, a, and an orange. So there's my, my main one there, is the acrylic one. That's the one with all the strength in it. And then I'm going to put some red in it and some orange. Now the strength to get over that dark colour is coming from that red there. But we still may have to do some extra bits and pieces to it. Now, I want the, the, the flowers to look like they've got a dark uh, sort of centre. So let's just see how we go. So, or we might just do the highlights with pastel afterwards. It might make it easier. So let's just put the colour on there. As you can see, that's a very dark red, isn't it? And that's too dark, but I'm not worried. I'm just going to paint them in this colour for now. All right, so just get them in there. So that's our first coat. Let's get them all the same colour. Let's just pop them in. I'll try and cover up the blue if you can. You know, where the flower head is. Like that, and get that colour on. Like that. We can wipe those blue bits away later. They, they can easily be wiped off. Um, and then like that. Like that. And we'll do some highlights with paint and then we'll finish off with pastel. Like that. So 
They're quite stylized. They're not trying to be amazingly like tulips, but they will have a tulipy look by the time they're finished because we've got other things to do to them. And keeping that kind of wine glass body shape. Quite a, a thick flower, aren't they? They really, they really hold their shape, don't they? They're not like um, the sort of, they're not like poppy petals, are they? Which, which get blown around. These are really sturdy flowers, um, and chunky petals. one there really so I'm going to do another one there so I'm going to just pop it sort of around about there like that. and then I'll do a stem coming away from it and there's my stem colour over there so I'll quick pop that in otherwise I'll forget to do it there you go so there's the stem just going through there like that and into the uh, into the uh, vase Right. Now all the red flower heads are there. Now we want to make the uh, the red a little bit more orangey. So we're going to use white to help strengthen the other reds, but without making them too pink. So I've got white acrylic going into that original red colour. Now I do have pink, of course. And so now I'm going to add the garash red and garash orange, and this will give us some nice. Highlights for the side. I'll go with a little bit more red acrylic as well, so it's not too. There we go. And now we can start to carefully. Now I'm, I'm working from here because these look quite dry. They've dried very quickly. I will give them a quick blast. It's very quick. And then I can start to lay on these petals. I'm not going to go all the way to the end because I want to do another colour inside. I want to make them look a bit darker inside. So this is going to go on like that. Sometimes they have like they have layers of petals, don't they? Going around, they, they, they just lay over the top of the, the next one. You know, so you get that kind of layer, and there's another one in there, but it's dark because it's got shadow on it because of these two covering it. So there's a petal like that, not all the way to the end. And then there's another one in there, which, if I just use the tip of the brush with less paint on it, will come out darker. There's another one under there, but do you know what? I'm not going to do that one because obviously it would look darker being under there, I feel, because it's facing down. I'll put a little bit of light on there, like that. Just leave it like that for now. Now this one, so working from the bottom up, generally I do. And there's a petal there. Another petal there, and another one just showing its edge coming around there. Like that. Next one up here. dry duller, I know they will, they, they would do, because when you're going over 
a dark colour, that always happens. You know, you're going to get that, that dulling down. But it's all right because as we as we work through them, we'll get them highlighted and get a bit different bits done on them. The main thing is not to just colour the whole lot in, you know, don't just colour it in with one colour because you, you want it to look like it's got separate petals. You know, we're not looking for realism, I know, not total realism, we're looking for a, but we want them to look like um, tulips. So we have to do roughly what how they grow, you know, that, that kind of layered petal look. Don't just colour the whole head in red. white in that paint because it's not really, that's it, I just put a little bit more uh, white um, acrylic in with the other reds just to give it a bit more power again because it looks kind of like that. This one here, this one's coming in like that, and that's that extra one I put in, so it had a bit of extra, a bit of an extra problem there getting it over because of the, uh, the green underneath it. There we go. Tulips, okay, they're not there yet fully, but they're coming, aren't they? They're starting to look a bit more tulipy. Uh, let me just make sure I'm still filming. Yeah, still filming. Now I'm going to give each head a quick blast. So now I'm going to start to highlight a bit more. Um, we will be using pastels definitely on these in a bit, but I'm going to carry on highlighting for now. So I'm using white red, um, not too pink, by putting some orange in it and a little bit of acrylic red to give it that strength. So you get that kind of a, a red. It's like, almost like a pink, isn't it? Pinky red. And this is good for highlighting areas on the petals like that. You've got obviously in the cup, the flower in there, you've got dark in that part of the tulip, and then the other side of the petals coming up inside there. You know, imagine it's a cup shape, these petals are just getting some light up here, so you want it to look um, dark inside it. So you don't want to just the, the petals on the other side are getting some light on them, but you've still got to show that there's dark inside there. Like that. So there's the there's the petals the other side of the um, tulip head, but you can see there's still some dark in there, and that way they'll look a bit more three D. Like that. So we've still got the dark stuff going on inside the, the tulip head. A bit of light on that one. Closing off some of those a little bit so you can sort of see it's a definite cup shape. And you just work at them and just enjoy the experience of painting, you know. It's all about enjoyment, isn't it, really? And you know, trying to get better at it as you as you as you go through painting and, and just trying to get better at it, you know, and enjoying it while you're doing it. Don't don't be an angry painter. I never get angry when things aren't quite going how you want them to in your painting. 
don't ever do that. It's just pointless because you end up, you get so uptight about, oh God, you know, you, you end up making it worse. And you, you look at yourself and if you was to video yourself, you'd see that you weren't enjoying it. The whole point is to enjoy it as well. If you're not enjoying it, just, or you're having trouble, take 10 minutes out, okay? Sometimes just go away, have a cup of tea, have a, have a glass of water or whatever, and just take some time out and then come back to it and look at it with fresh eyes. Never ever get angry because your painting's not going how you want it to. There's absolutely no point. Um, don't get upset. Don't think the world's against you because you can't quite achieve what you're trying to achieve. You know, that's normal. It's normal to not always get what you want to work in a painting, all right? Um, I'm sure, and I say this to kids a lot as well, and, and my adults, that, you know, Van Gogh didn't sit there painting away, or uh, Rembrandt, or Constable, or without making mistakes. There's no way on earth they went through those paintings without making little errors and things and correcting them or, or keeping some of the errors because it actually worked out quite well. It's quite normal um, for errors to happen and but the thing is how you deal with them. A good artist can fix errors that you don't want them to be there, you know, you just sort of fix them. But one thing, you always are in control up here. All right, and that's important. You are in control of what's going on, even if it's gone wrong. You can still, you're still in control. As soon as you lose control, that's when things start to go awry. And then the whole painting can suffer. Now I've made quite a light pinkish colour now. I've used a bit more white acrylic, orange and red. I'm starting back to the first one I was doing, which I think was this one. Wasn't it? And I'm just going to put a little bit more light on there. Like that. Not too much now, but I don't want to turn these into pink tulips. This is just shine. Shine. If we if we do too much, and I think, oh, that looks good. Look, a lovely shine, and then overdo it. And before you know it, you've got a pink tulip, and you haven't got any shine. Because um, you just got a pink tulip. Um, I'm just putting, this is literally shine on red ones. Okay, shine on red tulips. That's all it, this is. That's the colour there, that peach, that sort of um, salmon-y pinky red. I'm just putting a little bit of shine here and there. Not overdoing it. Right. Oh, lovely little uh, bits of light just flicking on my flowers there. And bringing them to life. Side of the tulip there, and then this piece like that on this one. A little bit of light in there and there, and on that one. It's a late comer. A little bit of light on there and on the end there, like that. There we go. Now we're going to uh, leave the tulips for a minute and let them dry. And I'm going to just do a, uh, a nice wooden tabletop. Um, I'm going to do it dark, wood, rich looking, a little bit of shine. And I'm going to use the colours that I've already got. So I've got brown and black and purple and orange and reds. And I'm going to just take some of that, um, that first colour I had, which was the colour I used for up here for the background. And I'm going to put that um, through here. I will be lightening it as well, so I'm going to just go over it actually. I'm going to go dark at the bottom, and as I come up, I'm going to start to add a little bit of brown and a little bit of orange into that same colour. Like this, bring it round the vase. That there. Let it blend a bit. More orange. More orange. I'm going to put it there. And then down the side of that vase. Then bring it away. Like that. Come back 
that in a moment. So just got a little bit of light, just a little bit of light showing there. This side I'm doing it lighter. So it's more brown, more orange on this side and whatever's left in the brush. Like that. So I'm just trying to get the same kind of effect about there. And down the side of the rise. Bring that out and let it blend. Drag it away from the vase because you don't want it to look like you, you paint it around the vase. So you want it to look like it's behind it. And we're here. I'll just drag that down first because it's that's it. Then bring it home like that. Bring it away then like that. It's a nice, rich, woody surface. We'll apply some shine to that in a minute, so it gets a bit richer. Like that. Now, there's no shadow there yet, so the shadow is this side, and I'm gonna darken that shadow in a bit as well, but for now, I'm gonna do the table shadow. I'm gonna use purple, the brown that I was using, that lighter brown, I'll just drag a bit more black in it. And purple, I might put a bit of orange in there as well, just to bring it round so it gets a bit more woody. And then I'm going to bring my shadow through here, like that, goes under there, like that. So it's darker down there. Now what I could do, that's quite thick, I'm going to try something out. I'm just going to see if I can scratch through it with the end of a paintbrush. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out lines here. Let's uh, maybe go with some lines like this. I'll just scratch some lines into the table then, just to give it that kind of um, like a panelled. Table. I'm going to darken it on side two, like that. On the left hand side, I'm just darkening these down. Oh, on the right hand side of this one, dark it down a bit. Like that, and another one there. And there. Some shadow there, so you don't see too much of the lines there. And just drag it through it a bit. So you get a bit more of a wood grainy look. Actually, I'll come this way with a wood grain. See what happens. See, I'm making it up as I go along, you can tell, don't you? Um, I'm just going to drag some, some woody lines down. See what happens. That's a bit dark, that one. And then if it goes dark, just drag it through. Like that. Take some off with my hand. I usually use my hand. Drag it through. And then you can do all sorts of little shapes. And this is all in prep for the pastels coming along in a minute because I'm going to do some bits and pieces with the pastels. Like that. Nice. Right, there we go. So there's our little table, got a bit of the shadow going on. Um, and now we're going to um, give it a dry off and then we're going to apply some pastel colours to it just to finish it all off. Um, you can kind of just remove the, the bits of blue, look. so that's slightly damp, it's clean, and then you can just streak away those bits of blue, look. take them off and rub them on onto a cloth or onto your hand to remove those bits of blue pastel, which are still kicking about from when we originally drew the, the shape of everything. I'm going to remove those, there we go, so they've all gone now. Okay, now that, that's drying immediately because it's barely, barely damp. It certainly does drench it or anything like that. Now, let's do a bit of work on the vase. I want to get a little bit more light on that vase. So I'm using a white, uh, a blue um, chalk. I've got a little bit of an end there, so I'm going to put a little bit of light there. Like that. Just rub it in. 
Obviously, your paint has to be dry for this. No point trying to do it if your paint isn't, because it will just immediately form a problem for you. So there's a nice shiny vase there. Now what I can do, oops, what I can do also is I can highlight it a little bit with some extra white there and just bring that down. Don't overdo it. Like that. Now onto the shadow there, isn't I, from that leaf. I might be able to get away with doing the shadow with just using uh, a wet brush. So there's my shadow up. And this is just a wet brush. And the shadow just curves the bit of a darkness over the uh, over the vase. And that's just going to go over there a bit and down the side there, and maybe a couple of other little bits of shadowing from over here. A little bit there. That might need darkening actually because obviously that's going into a darker area. So I'll put that on with a bit of dark paint, and I'll just use the dark blue in there. The shadowy bits. They won't dry quite as dark when they dry because um, you know obviously it will lighten up as it dries, it always does. Um, now I've got some yellow chalk here, just pure yellow. I'm gonna just put the odd little bit of yellow on some of these leaves, not too much. Here and there, don't overdo it on the stems as well. Put on that stem, put it on that stem, it's going over there. there. A little bit of light shimmy through there. And a little bit on there. I'm not overdoing it there at all, just a little bit. Now, I've got a pink pastel here, which we can put some highlights on our tulips. And just little bits of shine, the final shine going on here and there. Just a little bit. out the little bits of detail on the petals best you can. Like that. Okay, so they're just soft. Probably I've done that one already. Like that, and then I'm gonna put some red with it in a second. Just these little tiny little bits of shine on our lovely thick petals. A bit wet that flower, so I've got to be careful there. And now, finally, um, I've got a, a, a red chalk pastel, and I'm just going to make these look a bit redder in places and just bring back the redness without blocking everything that I've done now. So just being cautious here, and, you know, just just picking up on some stuff. All right, so don't block out everything you've just done. This is another part of the painting which is adding to what you've done. You're not blocking out what you've done before, you're just spreading up some of these and putting these lighter areas on the petals. Right, so be careful. Too much. If you push too hard with these things you end up with mess everywhere. You know, you've got to really just just touch the paper and just, just put it on. You don't want it all fall. I haven't got any pastel falling down the picture. If I was to push really hard, it would be falling down, it would be gathering in here. So you're just looking at doing small amounts um, on there. Uh, just giving it enough. These lovely red tulips. see the importance of keeping these little separate areas on each flower. Um, this little kitty 
down here still. They doubled the paint though, didn't they? Because I went over the green. So I think we've got more glass. Now, I've got a, uh, a dark pencil here, and I'm just going to pick out any final little bits and pieces. Nothing much, it's just um, just picking out and, 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 and shaping anything that I feel. Yeah, a little bit dark on some of those um, stems as well. You know, just little bits and pieces, nothing much. This is just me being me. thing now is to uh, get a little bit more light on our table and I'm going to use an orange pastel for that and I'm just going to put that through there and I'm going to show you the beauty of using a, a damp brush after you've put pastel in. So a little bit of light through there as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to drag this down my thumb like this. Just follow the uh, Lines. Remember the, the perspective, I did those lines to give you the perspective as if there was something swinging from about here. That gives you the lines because if you did them all going the same way you'd lose that sense of distance and we know that the back of the table is further away than the front of it so we have to show um, that like that. Okay, there's my light on the table. Put a bit of a dark line under there. A dark line in there, like this, so you can see the actual where the uh, where the tongue and groove boards are. And then I'm going to take a damp brush, um, a narrow one, like this, the one that we did the flower stems with. And then I'm just going to literally bring in some. This is barely wet, it's just slightly damp. I'm just going to bring in some wood grain lines. Just give the impression of wood grain. I love doing wood grain. And we're not taking all the orange away, the soft orange that we did. We're just cutting into it a little bit with a damp brush to give us the effect of wood grain on the table. It's just a you know, little detail there just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And we just flick through there as well. And that's about it really. That's enough. Just knowing when to stop. And uh, I'll just put a little bit more of a line around that there. Pick that out a bit. And uh, that's my little vase of tulips all done. And um, I might give those to my mum. She might buy them. I'm going to quickly sign it. And I'm going to sign it down in this corner here. Mason. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed doing it. Um, I certainly have, and I've enjoyed showing you as well. Um, it took about an hour in the end, this one. So, um, you know, just take your time with it. Just try and build it up in the, in the same way I have. You can fast forward through all the drying bits and any things you found that were boring. You don't have to position all your flowers in the same place I've done. I try to give it a balance with some leaves and flowers and, um, and that's enough for me. I think that's just about right. So good luck with yours and I look forward to seeing them. Please send me them. I love seeing them. If you are going to paint this, send, it, send them to me, <coughs> excuse me, either through Facebook or you can private message me or whatever. Just send them through and I'll put them up on the Facebook page if you, if you want me to. And um, thanks for watching, and I'll do another one very, very soon. Thank you. I sometimes do um, this one, you'll see this one with me talking on it, and sometimes I do another one sped up with some music on the background as well. Uh, check out the YouTube channel, it's Forge Cottage Art Club um, on YouTube. Um, there's about seven or eight videos already there. Please like and subscribe, 
and then we can build up that as well. Because what I plan to do when these art, when the art club gets going again, um, I'd still like to do these uh, tutorials. I find them uh, really enjoyable to do. And I think people further afield that can never come to the art club enjoy them too. There's people contacting me from all over really. So that will never be able to come because they live too far away. So um, I'll keep doing those as well. So uh, please let me know if you want me to continue doing them as well. I'd love to hear from you, I'd love to hear feedback. And um, you know, obviously I want to uh, please as many people with I, that I can with these paintings, I'm trying to do as many uh, different sort of styles and bits and pieces that I can. Anyway, take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye. Oh, one other thing, just before I go, I forgot to do this. The frame test, there we are, and there, there's the uh, tulips going just about inside the frame there. Always makes the picture look nice, doesn't it? Um, so there you go.